ओके गरिमा हेलो यस सर या हाउ आर यू आई एम फाइन सर फीलिंग कंफर्टेबल यस रेडी फॉर योर मॉक इंटरव्यू यस ओके वन थिंग मोर बिफोर आई स्टार्ट योर वॉइस इज नॉट कमिंग प्रॉपर्ली सो काइंडली कम क्लोजर टू योर माइक आई आई थिंक यू आर यूजिंग योर फोन सो मे आई रिकनेक्ट या नो नो इट्स इट्स फाइन इट्स फाइन Just be close to your phone. That's why so uh, receiver will receive your voice properly. Yeah, it's a fine. Okay, Garima, so let's start. Uh, just introduce yourself in a brief. I'm Garima. I was born and brought up in Patoli. I'm from Haryana. Uh, during my childhood, I developed a strong inclination towards the field of biology. So I decided to pursue my career in the same field. After class twelfth, I did my graduation in life sciences from the Delhi University. After that, I did my post graduation from the Kurukshetra University in biochemistry. I have qualified GATE examination, and currently I am pursuing BEd. PhD. BEd. BEd. Acha BEd. Okay. So uh, your master is in biochemistry. Yes, sir. So uh, what is your uh, area of interest and favorite topic? Uh, sir, immunology and metabolism. Okay, being a biochemistry students, your favorite topic is not biochemistry itself. <laughs> May I know the reason behind it? Why you are not interested in biochemistry? Because you are a MSc. Yeah. I'm interested in biochemistry, but as per the syllabus, or uh, because it was uh, mentioned in the interview guidelines that the interview will be on the basis of the syllabus given in uh, examination one and examination two. So in examination two, it is not core biochemistry. There are mainly three, four domains. That is immunology, molecular biology, cell biology, biomolecules, metabolism. Okay, so, so uh, yeah, got it. That means you are preparing yourself on the basis of uh, means syllabus, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Primarily on the basis of that. Otherwise, I am also preparing side by in biochemistry as well. Garima, in biochemistry, water plays very significant role. Can you elaborate yes, the significance of water molecule, uh, water uh, in the biochemistry? Yes, sir. Water uh, around forty seventy percent of the body is made up of water. Water is essential for performing various biological functions and metabolic reactions in the body. Water uh, it is required in transportation of solutes, um, and it is also required to maintain the constant. Uh, Uh, constant body temperature that is by homeostasis and perspiration anything more no okay justify the statement life is not possible without water yes sir um uh, water be, uh, being the uh, water is made up of two constituents that is hydrogen and oxygen oxygen uh, oxygen is the basic requirement for the body and uh, water is essential so because all the metabolic reactions primarily take place in water do we take oxygen from the water molecule what sir do we take oxygen molecule from water molecule no sir then why you are considering that water is a source of oxygen yes You have to justify your answer that water is essential for life. Life is not possible without water. And being biochemistry, so, you should uh, give some biochemical aspects answers. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sure. Sir. Now you may proceed. So because metabolic reactions and biochemical reactions take place in presence of water, water is also needed for transportation of various solutes. Okay. That's enough. Uh, to maintain constant body temperature. Ah, uh, okay. Garima, suppose uh, evaporation and vaporization takes place in the water bodies, right? Which different kinds of bonds will broken down when water get vaporized? Hydrogen bonds. Okay. hydrophobic bonds next does a water molecule have a hydrophobic bond itself 
no sir a water does not consist of hydrophobic yeah. bonds it yeah. is has uh, mainly uh, uh, hydrogen bonds only so suppose uh, water uh, is getting vaporized then which kind of a bonds will break down hydrogen bonds only hydrogen bond covalent bonds okay what is the vaporization and evaporation mm -hmm. sir evaporation takes place on large water bodies suppose you, if you have a cup of water then there will be no evaporation then how you can say that the evaporation takes place in large water body what is the difference between evaporation and vaporization in both processes water will convert into the gaseous molecule yes sir then what is the difference Okay, Garima. Uh, suppose you have a two solutions. One is pH seven, and one is pH four. So, when we uh, increase the pH of any solutions, then what will happen in terms of uh, hydrogen and hydroxyl ion? Sir, H positive ions will decrease, and O O H negative, that is hydroxyl ions, will increase. Uh, as we increase the pH value of any solution. Yes, sir. Okay. That will it turn into basic solution. Okay. Uh, what is the mean of buffer? A uh, buffer is a solution that uh, that maintains the pH of a particular solution. That is, it does not lead the solution to be more acidic or basic. It maintains the solution at that uh, constant state. Okay. Uh, how how it how it maintain the pH of any so solution? What happened there? So, what is the role of a buffer to maintain the pH of any solution? Sir, it. Sir, I can't recall it. Okay, don't worry. Uh, don't feel uh, com uh, uncomfortable. Be just relaxed and comfortable. Try to answer uh, all those things. Uh, most probably, you have heard all. Uh, you have studied in your UC and PG. Uh, all those things. Whatever I uh, am going to ask you. Uh, but uh, I cannot stand the situations you are feeling right now. So be comfortable and just uh, be relaxed. Okay. Okay. Uh, Garima, tell me one thing. <clears throat> Water molecule has a very significant role in uh, protein and uh, carbohydrate formation, right? Suppose there is a there uh, there is a polypeptidization. That means peptide bonds are forming continuously. So which kind of uh, reactions will take place there? Sir, in formation of a peptide bond, there is release of one water molecule. Okay, so what kind of reactions it it will call? De uh, dehydration because loss of water molecule. I am not sure. Mm -hmm. I am asking to you. Means I am not getting, sir. In what context are you asking? Means suppose, what? Suppose of... there is a, a polypeptide a polypeptides formation taking place, right? And there will be a, a process. There will be a chemical reaction taking place. So the name of that chemical reaction, I want to know. So there is formation of peptide bond by lo loss of one water molecule. Okay. Then the reactions will call dehydration or hydrogenation. Hydrogenation is the addition of hydrogen. And dehydration is the loss of water molecule. So, what will be the right answer for that? Dehydration. Dehydration. That means in biological system, dehydration reaction is very significant. Yes, sir. In all content, is there any is there any negative impact of dehydration in our body? Yes, sir. It is. Can you elaborate? Sir, I can't recall. Okay, uh, Garima, as you are interested in uh, metabolism and bioenergetics, what is the mean of entropy? Entropy refers to the degree of randomness or freedomness. Freedom. Okay. Suppose uh, two amino acids are going uh, going to join and form a dipeptide. So, what will be the difference of uh, entropy uh, before the joining of that bond and after the joining of this bond? Entropy will decrease, according to my knowledge, because 
prior to the dipeptide bond formation the molecule was free to matlab uh, to random itself in any position but now it has been constricted to a particular bond so its degree of freedom has been decreased that is entropy has been decreased of that particular amino acid so what is the significance of entropy in living system why we study entropy in living system i think i don't think there is any significance can you uh, can you just elaborate the significance of uh, entropy in living system Sir, I can't recall. Why we necessarily uh, uh, studying and uh, reading all these things, thermodynamics? That is, that is the part of chemistry. But uh, it is necessarily to understand the concept of entropy, enthalpy, gives you energy before going to the study about the metabolism or energetics. Why? Yes. So because it is linked to heat content and temperature as well. So that. So entropy that's doesn't mean about the heat and temperature. It's just randomness. so what kind of inferences we can we can have uh, after knowing the concept of entropy sir for example i can elaborate with an example of proteins like the proteins in unfolded state have more entropy where as the protein when it gets folded its entropy decreases so can you uh, can we uh, predict the stability or something like that uh, in reference of uh, entropy with the help of using entropy concept yes sir yes sir we can link that because if the if a particular molecule has more entropy then it will uh, then it will then it will be more stable ah okay that means there be, uh, less the value of entropy and molecule will be more stable yes sir okay so uh, can you uh, can you just uh, justify that there is, there are four different level of a protein that is primary secondary tertiary and quaternary so which is, which state or which level of a protein uh, uh, would have more entropy sir according to my knowledge primary structure of the protein will have more entropy because Why? it is uh, because it is not uh, confined to its place because of uh, lack of peptide bonds in its structure Because lack of the, lack because, of lack of peptide bond because the protein structure is formed when two amino acids joined by a peptide bond okay so among these four, four level of a protein uh, primary structures will have uh, more entropy according to you yes sir why sir because if uh, if i start with quaternary stru- quaternary structure quaternary structure is the protein protein level structure that is fully folded so its degree of freedom less will be very less that is entropy of this will be very less and so the primary structure is free to uh, move around that is it has the highest degree of freedom less that means it has highest degree of entropy what different kinds of chemical bonds are there in primary structure of the protein primary structure of protein bonds yeah um, non covalent bonds sir non covalent bonds like hydrophobic bonds wonder bond reaction hydrophobic bonds are there in primary structure yes sir <laughs> okay so uh, okay okay next one what is uh, what is more uh, chemical bonds in primary structure wonder wall forces sir wonder wall forces peptide bonds okay next so if all these kinds of bonds are present in primary structure then why there is a need of a secondary and tertiary structures will form if all kind of a chemical bonds whatever involved in the protein structures are just present in the primary structures then why there is a need of a, a super uh, stability structure like a secondary and tertiary yes sir okay garima can we uh, can you tell me the example of a primary structure any example of a primary primary protein or primary structure disulfide bonds disulfide bond is a is a protein no sir it's not a protein so i am asking about the example of a protein mm-hmm. primary suppose suppose you know about the primary secondary tertiary and quaternary structures so definitely there will be an example so i am yes, asking sir. about that what is example of a primary structure of the protein 
sir i can't help you secondary sir secondary consists of alpha helix and beta pleated sheets okay what is alpha helix and what is the property of yeah alpha helix is uh, it may be right handed or left handed which in which um, the amino acids to uh, arrange themselves in a spiral right handed or left handed helix which are further connected by the hydrogen bonds and beta pleated sheet consists of parallel beta pleated sheets and anti parallel beta pleated sheets anti parallel beta pleated sheets are more stable than the parallel beta pleated sheets why Uh, sir, because of better interaction. Better interaction in what? Parallel or anti-parallel? A better interaction in anti-parallel. Anti-parallel. Why this happen? Because they fit better in conformation. Okay. Uh, moving ahead. Uh, Garima, in plasma membrane, there are a certain molecules like as a, a lipid, protein, and carbohydrate, etc., and they have a different kinds of a chemical interaction. Okay. So. what kind of a chemical interactions are significantly present in the uh, formation of a plasma membrane and to maintain the integrity of that membrane what kind of what kind of a chemical interactions are significantly present in the making of a plasma membrane and their integrity also the integrity is maintained by certain substances such as cholesterol and uh, the plasma membrane is primarily composed of phospholipids so what kind of a chemical interactions are there uh garima tell me one thing uh, suppose you are dealing with the two molecules that is molecule a and molecule b molecule a has hydrophobic in nature and molecule b has hydrophobic in nature and you are trying to uh, pass these two molecules through the plasma membrane which molecules will get passed through the membrane either a or b and why so one is hydrophobic and another is hydrophilic yeah a is hydrophobic b is hydrophilic and you are trying trying to cross these two molecules through the plasma membrane which molecule will so get soluble, lipid soluble that is hydrophobic will more readily pass into the plasma membrane because the most of the uh, primarily composed of lipids okay uh good garima suppose uh, you are in a laboratory and you are doing your phd or some other research works and uh, there are ethanol right and generally we uses ethanol for the sterilization purpose and uh, ethanol has ability to kill the bacterial or uh, viruses or fungus or etc anything else what is the mechanism of that ethanol to killing the microbes how ethanol can kill the uh, microbes seventy uh, mm-hmm. most probably you have heard about the seventy percent ethanol yes sir yes sir why we are using seventy percent ethanol for the sterilization purpose not any other concentration like as a forty fifty ninety uh, ninety five etc yes sir I know have you heard about this yes sir okay have you heard about the uh, techniques used in the biochemistry Yes, sir. Can you name some techniques used in biochemistry for the analysis yeah. of protein isolation or uh, protein structures or the other things? Uh, mass spectrometry. Okay, mass spectrometry. Two D electrophoresis. Okay. And uh, bloating techniques. Okay. Western bloating. Just only this. Suppose. Suppose you are uh, working in a laboratory and you are trying to uh, isolate the protein molecules. So, which kind of a techniques will you use? Sir, two D electrophoresis. Directly to two D electrophoresis. Why? Sir, so for pro- uh, Western blotting as well. Western blotting. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Any other? Okay, Garima, have you heard about the native pH? Native pH. Yeah. Sir, I have heard, but I can't recall it right now. Okay. Uh, don't worry. What is what is the what is the CD and ORD? What is CD and ORD? 
Have you heard about this? No, sir. Circular dichroism and optical rotary dichroism. No, no, no. sir. Uh, okay. I think uh, you don't have idea about the spectroscopy, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Garima, tell me one thing. For the titration purpose, we use certain uh, acid or uh, certain base molecule to examine the concentration of unknown sample. What is the mean of a titration? <clears throat> Uh, sir, in titration, uh, titration means ref in titration we particularly means the exact. Sir, I know, but I can't explain. Like you have idea, but you are unable to speak something else. Yes, sir. Means a exact particular concentration can be determined by using titration. Yes, sir. Okay. Have you heard about the glassware beaker? Yes, sir. Why it is it known as beaker? Most probably you uh, you are uh, working in laboratory, so you did so many kinds of uh, chemical solution preparation. There will be a flask, measuring cylinder, etc., and beaker also. Why it is it known as beaker? No idea, sir. No idea. Okay. Uh, moving uh, towards your favorite topic that is energetics and uh, metabolism. <laughs> I think you are waiting for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Garima, tell me one thing. Uh, you have a two kinds of a cell that is prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells, right? And uh, both cells are utilizing glucose as a primary uh, source of uh, ATP that is primary source of uh, energy molecules. Which, molecule, uh, which, will, which cells will utilize more uh, glucose molecules to produce the same kind of it, uh, same amount of ATP. So, uh, prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells. Why? Sir, because uh, because in prokaryotic cells there are, is no mitochondria, and major amount of ATP is produced in cellular uh, cellular respiration because of Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. Okay, uh, means uh, in prokaryotic cell there is no mitochondria and what? The major amount of energy comes from NADPH and FADH2 that has energy stored in itself. Okay, that means there, uh, there will be no uh, electron transport system or uh, uh, that is TCS etc. Right? Yes. Sir. Okay, uh, there, uh, there was a scientist named this differences a term. What is the uh, what is the process? What sir? Have you heard about the Pasteur effect? Yes, sir. What is the Pasteur effect? Okay, Garima, tell me. <clears throat> RBC cells has the primary functions to carry out the oxygen. Right, and in biochemistry, we study the uh, sigmoid curve of a uh, hemoglobin carrying capacity. Yes, sir. And we know that is RBC cells do not contain any nucleus. Yes, sir. So, being a biological student and also biochemistry, especially, can you justify how any cells can survive their life without nucleus? Because each and every kind of a proteins will form from the DNA molecules and DNA reside inside the nucleus. If RBC cells do not contain any nucleus, there definitely there will be no DNA and definitely there will be no further protein or RNA molecules will form. So how RNA molecule, how RBC cells will, uh, uh, will maintain their life and continuously performing their functions without any problem? Do you have any idea about why RBC cells do not contain nucleus? Uh, because uh, if they if they will contain nucleus, they will consume maximum of the oxygen. To carry out the more oxygen? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, from the starting of the formation of uh, these RBC cells, uh, is it uh, from starting that there will be no uh, nucleus or something like it, it is? it happens later on? Sir, I guess it happens later on and it carries most of its function by repoport Lubering cycle. Sorry, what cycle? 
रेपो पोर्ट ल्यूब्रिंग साइकिल ओके व्हाट इज दिस सर इट्स इट्स लाइक ग्लाइकोलिसिस ओनली ग्लाइकोलिसिस ओनली व्हाट इज कोरी साइकिल ओके गरिमा ग्लाइकोलाइसिस ग्लूकोजेनेसिस ग्लूकोनियोजेनेसिस एंड ग्लाइकोनियोजेनेसिस दीज आर द टर्म्स यूज इन द ग्लूकोज मेटाबॉलिज्म कैन यू एक्सप्लेन ईच कॉन्सेप्ट वन बाय वन यस सर ग्लाइकोजेनेसिस इट इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप ऑफ सेलुलर रेस्पिरेशन दैट इन्वॉल्व्स द ग्लाइकोजेनेसिस ग्लाइको ग्लाइकोलाइसिस ओके it is the first step of cellular respiration that involves the catabolism of six carbon molecule into two three carbon pyruvic acid it okay. takes place in the cytosol and it is uh, the oxygen independent next come glyconeogenesis neo term signify new uh, new that means the synthesis of glucose from uh, uh, from sources other than carbohydrate for example amino acids and lipids this is glyconeogenesis next comes glycogenesis glycogenesis refers to the synthesis of glycogen from glucose it is a anabolic process and glycogenolysis refers to the breakdown of glycogen into glucose it's a catabolic process well done very good uh, where the process of a glycogenesis takes place a glycogenesis yeah sir in hepatocytes and adipose skeletal muscles the skeletal muscles and hepatocyte cells yes sir what is the ppp pathway sir pentose phosphate pathway it is also called as hexose mono uh, monophosphate shunt pathway because it is the alternative pathway so it's called the shunt pathway and uh, in so i can't recall it i know this but okay uh, in tca cycle how many molecule of nadh and atp will form for a single round of a cycle for a single round of cycle three nadh plus h positive one fadh2 and how many number of atp sir 3 into 2.5 No, no. That is th- that is the conversion of NADH and AP, uh, uh, FADH2 directly. What is the number of uh, ATP formed in TCA cycle directly? Only one. Only one for one cycle. Uh, sir, actually ATP is not formed in TCA uh, in Krebs cycle. That is TCA cycle. It's GTP that is formed. GTP then transfers its phosphate group to ADP that later converts into ATP. Okay, that means there will be no direct formation of ATP. Yes, sir. What is the substrate level of phosphorylation? Substrate level of phosphorylation is the phosphorylation in which high energy phosphate group transfers its phosphate group to a intermediate one. Like in glycogenesis, a uh, glycolysis, there are two substrate level phosphorylation. Which one? Sir, in step seventh and step tenth. What are the steps? That is substrate and product. Hmm. Uh, yes, sir. it is glucose 13 13 bisphospho glycerate 13 bisphospho glycerate to 3 phospho glycerate and last one is 2 pyruvic acid pp phosphonal pyruvate to pyruvic acid yes sir okay good uh garima phosphorylation photophosphorylation oxidative phosphorylation and substrate phosphorylation these are the terms related to the phosphorylation how you can look in, into this and uh, what are the differences among these four terms that is oxidative phosphorylation photophosphorylation phosphorylation and substrate level phosphorylation so firstly it's phosphorylation that is addition of phosphate group it takes place with the help of enzyme that is phosphatase phosphatase phosphorylase or phosphatase phosphorylase phosphorylase and what is the function of kinase 
yes sir kinase 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 hexokinase example okay hexokinase um next comes photophosphorylation it is mainly concerned with a chlorophyll containing organism that can be bacteria as well and in plants and uh, in oxidative phosphorylation it is sir in substrate level phosphorylation transfer of phosphate group from a high energy containing phosphate group to the intermediate one and in oxidative phosphorylation it is sir i can't recall it okay uh have you heard about the atp synthesis cycle what sir atp synthesis cycle atp synthesis cycle sir okay uh garima there are the two term that is synthetase and synthase yes sir can you can you differentiate in between these two term those two class of enzyme synthetase and synthase yes sir okay uh in photophosphorylation there are a certain kind of reactions takes place like as a c3 c4 c2 etc so what is the mean of a c2 cycle yes, sir i don't know this okay no idea about that this is also part of the metabolism and also biochemistry sir currently i have just brush up the topics that are according to my syllabus only same syllabus okay so okay no issue Uh, Garima, if I ask to you, uh, in metabolism, which molecules you have studied more and more and uh, feeling comfortable, then I will ask to the same topic, like as a carbohydrate, protein, uh, lipid, nucleotide, etc. Sir, I am okay with all. If I am able to answer the question, means. Oh, uh, okay. That means you have studied all these uh, bio molecules, right? Yes, sir. So may I ask some questions more? Yes, sir. Are you feeling comfortable? Yes, sir. Because I am feeling good. I am getting motivated that I need to learn much more. Okay, uh, okay, uh, Garima. So moving ahead, tell me the basic concept that is a nucleoside and nucleotide. What is the difference between them? Um, sir, it is um, nucleotide and nucleoside. Yeah. in both ribose sugar is present and uh, okay uh, leave it what are the different kinds of a chemical bonds are there in a nucleotide molecule suppose you have a if uh, if suppose you have a single nucleotide molecule so what different kinds of chemical bonds are there What are the chemical components of a nucleotide? N nucleotide. Yeah. Sir, right. Sugar. Yes, sir. Bonds are wo phosphodiester bond. Uh, okay. Next. Only phosphodiester bond. Phosphodiester bond uh, forms between what? The three prime OH and the five prime carbon of the another one. Three prime OH and three prime OH of so my question was about single nucleotide. I am not asking about the all nucleotide. I am just asking about the single nucleotide. If you have single ATP molecules, ATP is an example of a, a nucleotide, right? So yes, what different kinds of chemical bonds are there? Think about it. Probably you have studied. No idea. Okay, don't feel bad. It happens usually, and it might be possible that uh, you uh, are not able to recollect all these things. Uh, okay, what is the enomer? i think i have lost all my knowledge <laughs> these simple terms nucleotide nucleoside i am unable to recall and these are the basic ones 
That's why I'm asking to you. Okay. Don't worry. So one last question to you uh, regarding the water molecule. Uh, what is the hybridization of water molecule in uh, uh, oxygen of water molecule? Sp3. Sp3. Why? Sir, because it has tetrahedral shape. It has tetrahedral shape. That's why it is sp3 hybridization, or it has sp3 hybridization. That's why it has tetrahedral shape. Yes, sir. It has a tetrahedral. Why it has? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Have you heard about the distorted tetrahedral geometry? Yes, sir. What is what is the meaning of that? Sir, tetrahedral shape is 109.5 degree. Okay. And this tetrahedral shape is of water molecule that is 104.5 or 6 degree. This is because of the two lone pair electrons okay. of water. And because okay. of these lone pair of electrons, water has distorted tetrahedral shape. Garima, generally solid molecules will submerge and deep inside the liquid molecules. But in case of ice, there is not happening such things like that. Ice float in the water. Why? So because ice density is lower than that of water. Why ice density is lower than water molecule? Is there any reason? Both molecule, both both state has the same chemical composition that is S2 and S2O. If the same molecule is there, then why how uh, we can say that there is a less density or more density? No idea. Okay. Uh, okay, Garima, thank you for your nice interactions. And uh, now the session is open for you. If you have any query, any questions, any doubt regarding your interview preparations and your topics etc so uh, now you can feel comfortable and we can talk in hindi also and i will explain uh, whatever i asked to you uh, the questions and if you have any doubt further then you can ask to me so mera aakhri jo sawal tha aap se wahi tha ki normally jo solid hote hain wo liquid mein kya karte hain dip ho jate hain doob jate hain lekin ice ke case mein aisa nahi hai aapne kaha ki ice ka jo density hai wo zyada low hai as compared to the liquid water ke सो so, मेरा सवाल ये था कि जब दोनों ही जो स्टेट ऑफ मैटर हैं सॉलिड का मीन्स आइस का और वाटर लिक्विड का सेम कंपोजिशन है वाटर मॉलिक्यूल का तो फिर ऐसा क्यों है कि वहाँ पे डेंसिटी ज़्यादा है यहाँ पे डेंसिटी कम है सो इट्स ऑल अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द आइस मॉलिक्यूल राइट इन केस ऑफ आइस द वाटर मॉलिक्यूल फॉर्म अ केस लाइक अ स्ट्रक्चर जस्ट लाइक अ केस सो इन साइड द केस देर इज अ एरिया कवरिंग बट देर विल बी नो फर्दर मॉलिक्यूल्स so it occupy more space but having fewer molecule of water so that is why ice has a less density as compared to the water molecule so that means kya sakte hain hum log ki water mein liquid state of water mein water ka jo compactness hai wo zyada hai jabki jo aapka ice ka structure hota hai ice ke case mein aise just like a case like a structure banta hai aur inside the case yahan pe pura ka pura space kya hota hai khali hota hai jiski wajah se wahan pe area zyada cover ho jati hai bas uska mass kya hota hai kam hota hai That's why ice has a uh, fewer density, or yeah, that means lower density. Or its key value is that ice is what it does, flow it inside the water, right? Dusra saal mera aap se kya tha? Aap bata sakti hain? Iska answer nahi de paayi. Synthesis and synthesis. Yeah, nucleotide and nucleoside. So, jaisa ki aapko malum hai ki nucleotide is a made up of three components. That is ribose sugar, nitrogenous bases, and phosphate. these three molecules will form nucleotide and what is the mean of nucleoside it will uh, it is smaller than it will not comprise of phosphate yeah nucleotide minus phosphate is equal to nucleoside so mera sawal agla tha ki different kinds ke chemical bond jo ki nucleotide ke formation mein involve hote hain so sugar and nitrogen base ke beech mein jo bond banega suppose this is the sugar molecule this is the base right so the bond is known as the glycosidic bond which was yes, yes. glycosidic bond and the sugar between the sugar and phosphate there will be the phosphoester bond or phosphodiester bond okay and yes, uh, next question kya tha aapse mera 
sir enomers enomers what are enomers ha ah, enomers very good जब हम ग्लूकोज के स्ट्रक्चर्स को स्टडी करते हैं तो ग्लूकोज में जो आपका शुगर है राइट right? जो कि साइकिल फॉर्म में स्ट्रक्चर बनाते हैं फर्स्ट वाला जो कार्बन होता है उस कार्बन को बोलते हैं एनोमेरिक कार्बन राइट और उस कार्बन उस कार्बन पे हाइड्रोक्सिल ग्रुप के ओरिएंटेशन के बेस पे आप एनोमेरिक कार्बन के नाम पे बोलते हैं जैसे अल्फा एंड बीटा दीज आर अगर हम जो एनोमेरिक कार्बन है उस एनोमेरिक कार्बन के अलावा किसी दूसरे कार्बन पे हाइड्रोक्सिल ग्रुप के ओरिएंटेशन को चेंज करते हैं लाइक ए सेकेंड थर्ड फोर्थ फिफ्थ एक्सेट्रा तो उस एनोमेरिक उस डिफरेंसेस uh, के बेसिस पे जो स्ट्रक्चर्स फॉर्म होंगे उनको हम क्या बोलेंगे दैट इज द ए पी मर्स लाइक एज जितने भी जैसा कि आपने बताया कि गैलेक्टोज ग्लूकोज फ्यूकोज ये सभी एग्जाम्पल्स किसके हैं दैट इज द ए पी मर्स के हैं मैंने इनिशियली आपसे पूछा था कि बींग बायो केमिस्ट्री स्टूडेंट कैसे आप बता सकती हैं कि वाटर इज वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट इन लाइफ मीन्स बायोलॉजिकल सिस्टम एंड लाइफ इज नॉट पॉसिबल विदाउट द वाटर सो आपको स्टेटमेंट देना चाहिए था कि फॉर द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एवरी मॉलिक्यूल बायो मॉलिक्यूल दैट इज द प्रोटीन लिपिड एंड कार्बोहाइड्रेट पॉलिसिक्राइड एक्सेट्रा देर देर इज नीड ऑफ वाटर मॉलिक्यूल विदाउट वाटर इट कांट जितने भी एंजाइम्स हैं वो सभी एंजाइम्स के एक्टिव होने के लिए लिक्विड मीडिया चाहिए होगा राइट right? और विदाउट वाटर के ये एंजाइम्स एक्टिव नहीं हो पाएंगे बिकॉज वहाँ पर पी एस मेंटेन नहीं हो पाएगा तो अगर वाटर नहीं होगा तो डेफिनेटली जितने भी आपके एंजाइम्स होंगे सभी के सभी आपके इनएक्टिव हो जाएंगे नॉन फंक्शन हो जाएंगे एंड विदाउट एंजाइम्स देर विल बी नो एनी बाई केमिकल रिएक्शन एंड इफ देर विल बी नो एनी बाई केमिकल रिएक्शन लाइफ कैन नॉट बी सर्वाइव एनी मोर सो ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दीज फैक्ट्स वी कैन से दैट वाटर इज इसल फॉर द लाइफ एंड सर हाउ कैन बी सेट फॉर्मेशन ऑफ कार्बोहाइड्रेट एक्वायर वॉटर सपोज यू हैव अ ग्लाइकोजन right yes sir. and you want to it break down and uh, form glucose molecules so there will be a rehydration reaction for the formation of each molecules there will be a loss of the water molecule like as yes, a, uh, like as if there is a uh, formation of peptide bond so peptide bond formation ke time pe kya hoga water molecule loss hoga mm-hmm. aur jab us peptide bond ko todna hoga to fir kya hoga water molecule intake hoga right so jitne bhi anabolic and catabolic reactions chal rahe hain unko hone ke liye वाटर मॉलिक्यूल का प्रेजेंस होना जरूरी है कंपलसरी है और विदाउट कैटाबोलिक एनाबोलिक एक्शन के किसी भी लिविंग सिस्टम में कोई एक्टिविटी नहीं हो सकती है मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंटली जितने भी एंजाइम्स uh, होते हैं उन सभी एंजाइम्स को फंक्शन करने के लिए एक पर्टिकुलर ऑप्टिमम पीएच चाहिए होता है राइट right? और वो पीएच मेंटेन करने का काम उस पी उस पी के मीडिया uh, को बनाने का काम कौन करता है वाटर मॉलिक्यूल अगर वाटर नहीं होगा तो वहाँ पर लिक्विड फूड मीडिया नहीं बन पाएगा और उसकी वजह से पी एच नहीं हो पाएंगे राइट right? और सबसे इम्पोर्टेंटली स्ट्रॉन्ग पॉइंट आप दे सकते हैं किसी भी सेल्स का लाइव जो स्टेट है वो क्या है प्रोटोप्लाज में राइट right? yes, और प्रोटोप्लाज जो है हमारा हमारा क्या है पूरा फ्लूड है वाटर का उस वाटर में ढेर सारे ऑर्गेन्स भरे हुए हैं उस वाटर में ढेर सारे आयंस ढेर सारे एंजाइम्स प्रोटीन मॉलिक्यूल सब क्या है ऐसे सस्पेंडेड है अगर वाटर नहीं होगा तो किसी भी चीज का फ्लो अप नहीं हो पाएगा कोई भी चीज एक्टिव नहीं हो पाएगी और बेसिकली कोई रिएक्शन वहां पे नहीं हो पाएगा तो आप बोल सकते हैं कि उसके बगैर वाटर के बगैर आपका वो सरवाइव नहीं कर पाएगा अगला सवाल मैंने आपसे पूछा था कि बफर कैसे किसी भी सॉल्यूशन के पीएच को मेंटेन करता है आफ्टर एडिशन ऑफ अ स्लाइटली अमाउंट ऑफ एसिड और बेस सो बफर का चाहे जो भी बेफर हो चाहे फॉस्पेट बफर हो चाहे सोडियम बफर हो चाहे अगलाइन बफर हो वट द टाइप एंड वट द नेचर ऑफ बफर विल बी देयर बट द प्राइम फंक्शन इज टू वॉट दैट इज to maintain the ph how it maintain by donating or accepting the s plus ion buffer molecule jo honge wo acid aur base ke kya hote hain conjugates hote hain strong acid and weak base ke kya hote hain conjugates hote hain unke paas ye ability hoti hai usme ek part hota hai jo ki ahi s plus ion ko donate kar sakta hai aur ek part ko hota hai jo ki s plus ion ko receive kar sakta hai to jab kabhi bhi aap kisi bhi solutions mein koi acid ya base ko dalte hain to wahan pe disbalance hota kya s plus ion ka तो अगर कम हो रहा होगा तो उसे डोनेट करेगा ज्यादा हो रहा होगा उसे क्या करेगा एक्सेप्ट करेगा सो बाई डोनेटिंग एंड एक्सेप्टिंग एस प्लस आइन इन मीडिया बफर कैन मेंटेन द पी एच ऑफ दैट सोल्यूशन इन सर्टन लिमिट ऑफ एडिशन ऑफ एसिड और बेस 
दूसरा मैंने सवाल आपसे पूछा था डिस्टॉर्टेड जोमेट्री ऑफ वाटर मॉलिक्यूल दैट मीन्स वाई वाटर मॉलिक्यूल हैज डिस्टॉर्टेड टेटरल जोमेट्री सो जैसा कि आपको मालूम है कि ऑक्सीजन uh, के पास टू लोन पेर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन है और टू बॉन्ड है तो एस पी थ्री हाइब्रेजन होने का मतलब होता है कि वहाँ पे फोर बॉन्ड पेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन इन्वॉल्व होने चाहिए तो आपके दो क्या है केमिकल बॉन्ड पेयर है और दो क्या है आपका लोन पेयर है अ सिंगल लोन पेयर बॉल बिल काउंट एज ए सिंगल बॉन्ड सो दैट इज वाई देर बिल फोर कोवेलेंट बॉन्ड इक्वेलेंट टू फोर कोवेलेंट बॉन्ड सो फोर मीन दैट इज वन इज फॉर द एस एंड थ्री इज फॉर द पी थ्री सो दैट्स वाई इट हैज एस पी थ्री हाइब्राइजेशन जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रेजेंस ऑफ अ लोन पेयर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन देयर रिपल्स विल भी ग्रेटर दैन बॉन्ड पेयर बॉन्ड पेयर दैट इज वाई द जीमेट्री विल भी डिस्टॉर्टेड लोन पेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन के बीच में क्या होती है रिपल्सन होती हैं और जो जोमेट्री होती है वो क्या होती है एक तरीके से डिस्टॉर्ट हो जाती है दैट इज वाई आपने पढ़ा होगा कि जो बॉन्ड एंगल होता है वो नॉर्मल टेट्रा हेडल के कंपेरेटिवली थोड़ा सा क्या है लोअर है राइट जैसा कि आपने बताया कि टेट्रा हेडल अगर नॉर्मल होगा तो वन जीरो नाइन पॉइंट समथिंग होगा जबकि वाटर केस में कितना होता है वन जीरो फोर पॉइंट समथिंग राइट तो इस तरीके से आप उसको बोल सकते हैं कि जस्टॉर्टेड टेट्रा हेडल जोमेट्री है ओके और मैंने सवाल आपसे पूछा था कि अगर सपोज आपको प्रोटीन को आइसोलेट करना है तो आप कौन कौन से टेक्निक को यूज कर सकते हैं सो फॉर प्रोटीन आइसोलेशन देर इज डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ क्रोमेटोग्राफिक टेक्निक लाइक एज साइज क्लिन क्रोमेटोग्राफी टेक्निक राइट एफेंटिक क्रोमेटोग्राफी टेक्निक आइसोलेटोग्राफी टेक्निक अगर आपको साइज के बेस पे करना है तो साइज क्लिन करेंगे बाइंडिंग एफेंटिक के बेस पे करना है तो एफेंटिक क्रोमेटोग्राफी करेंगे और अगर आपको चार्ज के बेसिस पे करना है तो क्या करेंगे दैट इज द जो की आप यूज कर सकते हैं इलेक्ट्रोफोरसिस भी टेक्निक है जो की मोलिकुलर वेट के बेसिस पे मोलिकुलर वेट के बेसिस पे सेपरेट करता है और आइसोलेट्रिक फोक्सिन टेक्निक है जो की प्रोटीन के सेपरेशन के लिए यूज किया जाता है टू डी इलेक्ट्रोफोरसिस है जो कि यूज किया जा सकता है राइट तो देर आर सर्टेन टेक्निक्स यूज फॉर द आइसोलेशन ऑफ प्रोटीन मॉलिकल्स ओके सो गरिमा आपका इंटरव्यू कब है 15 को नो सर इट्स ऑन 20th अच्छा सॉरी uh, मैंने शायद मेरे ख्याल से जो टेबल बनाई थी तो उसमें फिफ्टींथ मैंने लिख रखा था और मैं आपके फॉर्म को देखा था तो उसमें शायद मैंसन था सो दैट इज वाई ये मिस्टेक हुआ एनी वे ट्वेंटीथ को है तो फिर तो आपके पास काफ़ी टाइम है नियरली आपके पास वन वीक का टाइम है मैं आपको सजेस्ट यही करूँगा गरिमा कि अगर आप बायोकेमिस्ट्री और इम्यूनोलॉजी में अपने आप कंफर्टेबल फील करती हैं तो आपको इन टॉपिक्स को थोड़ा बसअप करने की ज़रूरत है और बहुत सारे मैंने क्वेश्चन बायो केमिस्ट्री से आपसे भी पूछे इसके पहले वाले वीडियोज भी पूछे हुए हैं अगर आप इतना भी काम कर लें कि जो वीडियोज में मैंने क्वेश्चन पूछे हुए हैं अगर आप उनके भी आंसर्स को तैयार कर लेती हैं आई मीन की भी देख रही हैं सारी वीडियोस। अच्छा वेरी गुड। तो उनका इम्यूनोलॉजी रिलेटेड हुआ तो अच्छी बात है आपके सिलेबस में भी इम्यूनोलॉजी है राइट और इम्यूनोलॉजी आपका फेवरेट भी टॉपिक है तो आप वहाँ से जो क्वेश्चंस मैंने पूछे हुए हैं आप उनको प्रिपेयर कर सकती हैं अच्छे तरीके से और बना लीजिए कि देखिए आपका क्या क्या हो रहा है मेन वाइड आप ये चीज़ कर सकते हैं कि जो भी आपका मेन डोमेन है दैट इज बायो और स्पेशली इम्यूनोलॉजी उसको आप अच्छे से तैयार कर लीजिए ठीक है अच्छे से अच्छे से इन द सेंस ये कि जो बेसिक जो टर्नोलॉजी है आपको बहुत डेप्थ में जाने की जरूरत नहीं है इन द सेंस की कोई मैकनिजम आपसे वहाँ नहीं पूछेगा लेकिन ये कि आपको जो टर्म्स है ना वो पता होने चाहिए राइट और कोशिश करिए कि आपका एटलीस्ट जब ये चीज़ आपसे पूछा जाए कि आपका जो एरिया है डोमेन है वो क्या है तो उस पर आप कॉन्फिडेंटली बोल पाए राइट जैसे अभी आपसे जब मैंने ये पूछा तो आपने कई सारे सवाल का जवाब दिया भी और कई सारे सवाल का जवाब आपने नहीं भी दिया तो ये मैं बहुत अच्छा तो नहीं कहूँगा कि अच्छी तैयारी है बट आप इसको सुन करके डिमोलाइज ना हो ये आपके प्रिपरेशन करने के लिए है कि हाँ आपको और ज़्यादा स्टडी करने की ज़रूरत है स्टडी इन द सेंस ये कि आपको जो uh, जो बेसिक जो सरफेस चीज़ें हैं उनके बारे में आपको आइडिया होना चाहिए लाइक है सपोज यू आर एम एस सी स्टूडेंट एम एफ आई आस्किंग टू यू दैट इज वॉट इज निक्रोटाइड एंड निक्रोसाइड सो इट्स नॉट गुड फॉर यू तो आपको इतनी सारी चीज़ों का आंसर आपको पता होना चाहिए तो uh, मेरे ख्याल से आप सिर्फ मुझसे uh, ये मॉक टेस्ट के लिए जुड़ी हुई है राइट तो आपके पास कोई स्टडी मटेरियल नहीं है ओके तो कैसे तैयारी कर रही हैं फिर आप Sir, uh, I was preparing metabolism and immunology from Totara book and uh, Path Pathfinder. 
ओके गरिमा अभी नेक्स्ट सेशन का टाइम हो रहा है तो आपसे अभी डिस्कशन हम लोग यहीं पे क्लोज करेंगे और इसके बाद अगर आप अगर तैयारी कर रही हैं अगर आपको कुछ डाउट है सपोज मेरे पास जो जो बच्चे कोर्स परचेस किए हुए थे जिनको मैंने स्टडी मटेरियल दिया हुआ था तो अभी आपको परचेस करने की जरूरत नहीं है आपके हेल्प के लिए मैं आपको वो जो पी होगी वो पी शेयर कर दूँगा आप उसे उसको देख करके पढ़ लीजिए वो काफ़ी ज़्यादा हेल्पफुल होगा पूरा कंसाइज है बायो का और न्यूरोलॉजी का तो आप उसको लेकर के अच्छे तरीके से तैयारी कर सकती हैं ठीक है सर प्लीज टेक माय अनदर मूक इंटरव्यू ऑन 16th और 17th आई विल बी प्रिपेयर्ड वेरी वेल दैट इसके लिए इसके लिए अभी तो मैं आपसे कुछ कमिटमेंट नहीं कर पाऊंगा गरिमा बिकॉज़ कई सारे कैंडिडेट हैं जिनका कि स्लॉट अवेलेबल मतलब मैंने अलॉट कर दिया है आप डेफिनेटली अगर ऐसा कुछ पॉसिबिलिटी बनेगी देन आई विल अरेंज अ स्लॉट फॉर यू एंड वी विल इंटरेक्ट फर्दर यस सर कैसा लगा इंटरव्यू देकर के सर बहुत अच्छा लग रहा कि पता चल गया कि अब कौन-कौन सी चीजें पढ़नी चाहिए कौन कौन सी नहीं पढ़नी चाहिए देखिए इंटरव्यू में क्या होता है ना कि चीजें बहुत आपसे डेप्थ नहीं पूछी जाती हैं बहुत ट्रिकी और बहुत सिली क्वेश्चन पूछे जाते हैं अब तक जैसे जैसे सपोज अभी मैंने आपसे पूछा कि वेपराइजेशन और इवोपोरेशन में क्या डिफरेंसेस होगा आप सही से बता नहीं पाए यस सर राइट इवोपोरेशन की जो प्रोसेस है वो और नॉर्मली होती है जैसे हमारे जो कपड़े सूख रहे हैं वो क्यों सूख रहे हैं जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ इवोपोरेशन इवोपोरेशन होने के लिए वाटर मॉलिक्यूल को 100 डिग्री सेल्सियस टेंपरेचर की रिक्वायरमेंट नहीं है इवन आपके ठंड में भी कपड़े सूखते हैं ना <laughs> अगर वाटर मॉलिक्यूल सिर्फ 100 डिग्री सेल्सियस पे ही स्कैप आउट होता फिर तो ठंड में हमारे कपड़े नहीं सूखने चाहिए थे yes, बट विंटर सीजन में भी कपड़े हमारे सूखते हैं तो इवोपोरेशन कैन टेक्स प्लेस एट एवरी टेम्परेचर इवन जीरो डिग्री सेल्सियस टेम्परेचर बट वेपोराइजेशन कैन ओनली टेक्स प्लेस एट द हंड्रेड डिग्री सेल्सियस ऑफ टेम्परेचर सो दिस इज दी डिफरेंस बिटवीन दिन वेपराइजेशन मेरा सवाल आपसे ये था कि अगर वाटर मॉलिक्यूल वेपराइज हो रहा तो हो रहा है तो कौन सा बॉन्ड ब्रेकआउट होगा सो दैट इज हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड ही है जो कि उसको लिक्विड फॉर्म में बनाता है हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड के इंटरेक्शन से अगर ब्रेकआउट हो जाएगा तो वो गैसियस फॉर्म में कन्वर्ट हो जाएगा ओके होपफुली गरिमा के भी uh, काफी सारी चीजें आपको जानने को मिली होंगी स्मॉग इंटरव्यू से और आपको एक आइडिया भी लग पाया होगा कि अब आपको फर्दर क्या स्टडी करना है आपको पीडीएफ हम शेयर कर देंगे अगर मैं भूल जाऊं तो आप एक मैसेज ड्रॉप कर दीजिएगा ठीक है तो मैं आपको वो शेयर कर दूंगा बायो केमिस्ट्री का और इम्यूनोलॉजी का वो पीडीएफ डी सफिशियंट होगा आपके लिए अगर आप उतना भी प्रिपेयर कर लेंगे पूरे एक वीक में so ले लेना एक बार ठीक है इट्स ओके okay, देखेंगे